In Revit, the phasing tool allows you to set up the phases of the project along a timeline. You can add as many phases as you want to, and by establishing these in a timeline, Revit keeps track of which phases happen before or after which other phases. You can view this timeline by going to the Manage tab and click on the Phasing button. Under the Project Phases tab, the timeline just appears as a list ranking the phases in the order that they happen. If you've opened the project with the OPM template, then you'll notice some phases have already been set up for you. The first phase in the timeline is existing, followed by new construction, and then finally future. So for every single component and wall in the project, you'll define the phase that it was created in. This is how Revit keeps track of which components were created before and after each other. And luckily, you don't have to worry about manually selecting the phase of every wall and component because views are assigned to a phase also. So when you draw a wall or place a component in a view, Revit automatically assigns that object with the same phase as the view it was placed in. You can also see that some of the views have already been set up for you. The first floor plan is set up under the new construction phase. And you can verify that by going to the view's properties and seeing its phase is defined as new construction. If I open up the existing first floor plan, under its properties, its phase is defined as the existing. So if you want to model an existing building in the project, you want to model it in the existing floor plan view. So I'll go ahead and lay out some walls. Place some windows and a door. Once all the components and walls have been placed in the view, I can select them and look at their properties and see that Revit has automatically assigned these components to the existing phase. So by keeping track of when all of these components are created, this is how Revit gives you the ability to hide, show as is, or graphically override how these components display in each view using filters. You can set up as many phase filters as you want to and assign them to any views. So for example, in the existing drawing view, all of my content that I modeled in here shows up with regular line weights, and it's automatically been placed on the existing phase. But if I go to the first floor plan view, you'll notice that the phase filter is set up to override any objects modeled in a previous phase to be grayed out. It's the first floor plan view where I'll want to model any new construction. So using my wall tool, I'll draw new content in this first floor plan view, place some windows, a door, and new wall. So after placing all the components and walls in the first floor plan view, You'll notice all the components have been automatically assigned the, the phase as new construction. Their line widths show up as normal. And now if I go back to the existing first floor plan view, you'll see that all the construction has disappeared. That's because since those items were all assigned to a later phase, Revit knows the order that the phases appear in the timeline. And so it knows not to show up any objects in an earlier phase. It knows not to show up any objects that were created in a later phase in any earlier phases. Actually, So really, the phasing tool is actually a pretty simple one. All you do is you set up a timeline. With that timeline, Revit identifies if what components were created before or after what others in the view that, you have here, that you're in. And based on this information, you have three choices of how to show that object. You can either show the component as is, hide it, or override it using patterns and colors. So along with tracking the order that the phases occur, Revit also keeps a track of which items were demolished and which items are temporary. This gives you the ability to hide or graphically override these items as well. Going back to my first floor plan view, you can define an object or a wall as demolished by using the Demolish tool. That's located under the Manage tab, and it looks like a little sledgehammer. Hovering over any object or wall, you just click to demolish it, 
and you can see that Revit automatically infills the missing door with a new section of wall. By default, the infill will be the same construction as the host wall. But after I escape out of my demolish tool, if I select the infill, I can always swap it out for a different wall type. If I didn't want any infill to happen at all, if I wanted it to remain as an opening, then I'd have to create a new wall opening into this infill panel. If I want to demolish this section of wall, I want to first split the wall using the split tool. Then I can use the demolish tool to demolish it away. For temporary items, Revit automatically defines an item to be temporary if it was first created and then also demolished all within the same phase. So for example, if I need a site fence, I'll draw a new site fence in this view. Then using the demo tool, I'll demo it away. Not only has it demoed it, but Revit has marked that item as being temporary. So since Revit not only keeps track of what items were demolished, but also when they were demolished, it's important to demolish items in the correct phase. You'll notice that the items that were demolished and defined as temporary have disappeared out of the view, but that's because the phase filter was set to hide demoed and temporary objects. If I go to the demo first floor plan view, you can see all the dem demolished objects and temporary objects have been graphically overridden and shown as dashed lines. To adjust these graphic overrides, go to the phasing buttons located under, under the managing tab, and this time click the graphic overrides tab. And again for phasing, you'll see these four categories. For the phasing tool, Revit is organizing every object and wall in any given view in just one of these four categories here. It's either thinking of it as an existing, new, demoed, or temporary item. The terminology can get a little confusing, because by existing, it doesn't mean that it's all items that were in the existing phase. What it means by existing is, it looks at an item, and if the item was created in a phase occurring before the, phase, the view we're looking at, then it categorizes it as an existing item. When it talks about new, it's saying any item newly created in the view you're looking at treats it as a new item. It's only using the phases to determine the order that these things appear and know whether an item occurred before the current view or after the view. So the phasing and this category may have the same name, but it doesn't mean that it's, it's looking at the same thing. So after determining how you want all previous items to look in the override, you can set them up just like you would with the visibility and graphics. You can change its projection and surface lines with either a line weight, color, or pattern, its cut lines, even give it a half tone. And here at the end, when something is overridden, Revit will add a new material and call it existing phase automatically so that all your material tags coordinate with the model. Once you have all your, your existing items, newly created items, demolished and temporary items overrides set up, you can go to the phase filters to set up a new filter. So you can create, create as many new filters as you want to and give them a new name. And once you do that, you just go down the list and you just de determine for each filter how you want each category to appear. You have only three choices. A category can either show as is with its regular line weights, which is called by category. It can be overridden using the graphic overrides you defined, or it can be not dis displayed and be hidden completely. So as an example, under show previous and new, this is where our, this is the face filter that our new first floor plan view is set at. Everything newly created in that view then is just gonna be regular line weights. Anything that was created in a in a phase before that is overridden, in this case, grayed out, and then demolished and temporary items are not displayed. And you can see in show previous and demo, here, temporary items and demolished items are overridden, so they're gonna show as dashed. Once you have all your phase filters set up, 
click OK. And in any view, we can change it out and give it the face filter by clicking the pull-down menu in the property.